Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. And I need someone to come here and turn this thing on. Genesis chapter 1, verses, or just verse 28. So get your Bibles and open it to Genesis 1, 28, and that's where we're going to start this evening. Genesis 1, 28 reads, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish. Circle that word, replenish. Replenish the earth. And subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Gap theory people think they have me right there with the word replenish. Obviously, replenish means to fill up again, right? Well, maybe in today's understanding of that word and how it's used in our English language, Well, but what about in 1611? When the King James scholars put the King James Bible together. God commands Adam and Eve to go replenish the earth. It's clear here in Genesis. And you might be asking, doesn't replenish mean to fill or refill? Which then implies that the earth, some ancient time way before Adam, was once full. But somehow, whatever happened way back then, it became empty. The Hebrew word translated replenish. I'll get to the English in a minute. But the Hebrew word translated replenish, here that you find in the King James Version of verse 28, is male. Just write M A L E. Now, M A L E in our English language spells out male, but it's male in the Hebrew. And what it means in the Hebrew is not refill, but to fill thoroughly and to fill completely. So write it down. And those who, of you who doubt me, which I still don't understand after all these years, that you would, but you know, there'd be some that still do. They have to just check it out themselves. And I encourage you to do that. I'm not against that. I've said many times, prove me wrong when it comes to things of this nature. Molly, it means to fill thoroughly or fill completely. It never translated or meant refill. So if that's true, it does not imply anything about some ancient time before Adam, previous conditions. You see the same Hebrew word used in several other locations. And every time you see it used is to fill. For instance, just write this verse down, Hebrews 6.11, not Hebrews, it's Genesis 6.11. When the earth had become filled with violence due to the weaknesses of man. Genesis 42, 25. Write that down. I've preached a message on this. Joseph gave orders to fill the bags of his brothers with grain.
and just using common, common sense, male there that's used in the Hebrew doesn't mean that he gave orders to refill it because they were there to buy the grain because there was a famine back in Canaan. So they came with their bags empty. Well, you're saying that it must be an error in the King James. No, there's no error in the King James. They used the right word, replenish. Well, I know what the Hebrew now says because you just gave us the definition of it. But still, the English translation says replenish. So it has to be an error. And now I'm telling you it's not. The word over the centuries drift in its meaning. When the King James Bible and its translators was put together in 1611, the word replenish had a total different meaning. Back then it only meant to fill completely. Case after case after case, not just in religious writings, but secular writings, with only two exceptions that anyone could ever find, and both of them were used in a poetic piece of writing about refilling. For instance, if you take a number from 1 to 10, every time this word was used, replenish, in any type of English writing or literature or in the scriptures, well, definitely in the scriptures, but you, count, you take everything in consideration. If you take a number from 1 to 10, 99.99, not 99, 9.99, percent of the time it meant to fill to fill to fill completely Genesis 1 28 does not imply that the earth was ever empty I mean ever full excuse me before Adam and Eve it was empty and void before Adam and Eve now with that out of the way I'm going to go to what other people have to say about it. In spite of the overwhelming array of biblical facts against it, against what? The gap theory in this case. The old gap theory, or one of its merry, many variants, still occasionally rears its head in unexpected places. It basically involves the belief that the recent six-day creation in Genesis is really only a recreation. This allegedly second creation is supposed to have taken place upon an earth that became empty, having once been filled. To many people, this seems blatantly obvious from reading the verse above. I want to change that just a little. Too many people in our modern times, and you'll understand what I mean by that in a few moments. Too many people, this, too many people, this seems blatantly obvious from reading the verse above, which is from the King James translation. When I say I want to replenish my kitchen cupboard, I mean that I want to refill or restock it, which means that though it's now empty, it was once full. By seeing the word replenish, People think, not surprisingly, isn't God telling us that he wants Adam and Eve to refill the world? And doesn't that mean that it had previously been filled, then somehow emptied? But as, but as any Hebrew interlinary Bible or Bible dictionary will tell you, the word translated as replenished in Genesis 1.28 is the Hebrew ver verb male which simply means fill, not refill, 
which is why most modern versions translate the word in Genesis 1.28 as fill. But this does not necessarily mean that the King James translators made a mistake here. They seem to have known what the Hebrew word meant, as shown by the fact that in most other places it appears in the Old Testament, they simply translate it as fill. The key to unraveling the apparent confusion is the fact that languages continually change. Quite simply, the usage of this word has changed since the King James Version appeared some 400 years ago in 1611. Back then, people were more likely than nowadays to say things like, I am replete, R-E-P-L-E-T-E. -E. I am replete with happiness. Which is, a, which is just another way of saying, I am full of happiness. And replenish, or fill, is the verb form of the adjective replete, full. People reading the King James Version in earlier times would have likely understood replenish to mean exactly what the Hebrew word means, fill. In defense of those who, who've have, who have held to the refilled understanding, the confusion is quite understandable. In today's English, we have fill and refill, and there is stock and restock. In each case, the prefix re, R -E, means again. And to make it even more confusing, there is actually a word plenish, P-L-E-N-I-S-H. That means fill, though it's a very old word too, one that gets used even less nowadays than replete. Today, we, when we say or write replenish, we unmistakably mean refill. It's no wonder people think that replenish must refill in Genesis 1.28 except that when we examine the Hebrew, we know it means fill. The information about older English explains it all. If God had wanted to tell Adam to fill the earth again, there were, there were unmistakable ways of saying this in the Hebrew. The gap theory is neither viable nor harmless. Gap theories in all their many versions propose that one can squeeze millions of years into just before Adam. For example, between the first two verses of the Bible. In short though, the gap or ruined reconstruction theory did not arise from any reading of the text, but was discovered as a possible answer to secular speculations of long ages. Basically, so Christians don't look like freaks because science was being so accepted as know-it-alls and all-knowing that God forbid you go against it and what they, with their scientific brains, concluded about what age this earth was, which included millions and tens of millions that increased to billions of years. Now, I don't know how old Earth is. I'm talking about prior to Adam and Eve. All I know, it was without form and it was empty. No life prior, period. How long we existed in that state? That could be argued. But what can't be argued that Adam and Eve were the first, as we would say, human life walking this planet. And all the other types of life were created in those other days of the first six. did not arise from the reading of the text, but was discovered as a possible answer to secular speculations of long ages. It was never biblically viable. 
resulted in large numbers of young people being lost to the church during their higher education as they realized that their supposed answers didn't work. Gap ideas have had good intentions but are not, but are not only wrong, they have done considerable damage to the faith. You gotta excuse me at times because I'm trying out these new reading glasses, prescription reading glasses, and I'm not a fan. And sometimes the words just are blurry to me. So if you see me pausing a little bit more than often than I normally do, you know the reason why. They tell me my eyes need to adjust to it. Well, we'll see. The classic gap theory historically served largely to lull, lull the church into a false confidence about the dangers of compromise on the age question. Because of this naked, naturalistic, evolutionary proposals were permitted to take over the areas of higher learning largely unopposed with the ch church thinking they had the answer. <clears throat> so that brings us, what does the word replenish the earth mean? In the King James Version, the English translation. In the King James Version, the KJV, it contains the expression, replenish the earth. Some have used this translation to support the gap theory. We already covered that. Also known as the ruin reconstruction theory, which involves a necessity for God to refill the earth after a pre Adamic race had perished as a result of the so called Lucifer, Lucifer flood. Is this interpretation correct? Well, you know what I think. No. The word replenish occurs seven times in the KJV. Here in Genesis 1.28, again in Genesis 9.1, both times in the imperative, and five times in the three major prophets in the passive and causative forms. So, so does the Hebrew original in these cases really mean refill? But before getting to the Hebrew, we must ask why the King James people translators used the KJV translator, excuse me, used the verb replenished. An examination of the Oxford English Dictionary shows the word was used to mean fill from the 13th to the 17th centuries, and I have verified this, believe me. So the Oxford English Dictionary, the OED, shows that the word was used to mean fill from the 13th to the 17th centuries. In no case quoted in these five centuries does it ambiguously mean refill. The OED defines replenish as having ten meanings throughout history. For instance, for a few, give you a few examples, replenished, fully stocked, provided or supplied, filled, phys physically or materially filled, full or may full, in the adjective forms, <clears throat> To replenish, as far back as 1494, was meant to make full. Fill with food. Fill space. Fill your heart. Fill with feeling. The English word comes through a lot of changes from Latin, pleo, P-L-E-O, or replio, R-E-P-L-E-O. There's also the adjective plenus, P-L-E-N-U-S, means filled. So we must now trace the prefix re, R-E, and see what it means. 
In very old Latin, it did mean again. But the, by the time the Bible went into Latin, it had lost some of its meaning. We see this in the later French word remplir, which doesn't mean refill, but fill. In late Latin, it was reemplir, and re, re, had already lost its basic idea of again. In many other words, it now meant completely or altogether. We notice also that two of the meanings in history included making full. In similar English words, we have this meaning refresh, which means to make fresh, or relax, which means lax, or release, which means to make loose or free. But when the King James Version was translated, replenish was just a scholarly word for fill. They almost certainly came to use it because an old word plenish, P-L-E-N-I-S-H, was dying out. <clears throat> We already covered this, but it's worth repeating. There's another English word that comes from repleo. It is replete. We can say I replete using a politer word than full up with food. It doesn't mean full again. So the understanding of the word in the King James Version is that replenish then just meant fill up. Though some hundred years later began to be mean refill, when some scholars convince people that re, re, should be re, should be really mean again. So in 1611, it's quite clear that translators didn't necessarily convey anything about a second filling of the earth, which we find in Genesis 1.28. Now as to the Hebrew word itself, it is male, the simple verb fill. In its various forms, it occurs 306 times in the Old Testament. Only seven times the KGV translated it as replenish. But 195 times, fill, filled, or full, full, F-U-L-L. <clears throat> Quite clearly, the idea of refilling is completely absent from the Hebrew. There is no doubt on that score. So the English of the KJV is the only problem. We all know that languages change over the years. So that's the real explanation of the misunderstanding about this verse that tells us God commanded the first humans to fill up completely the earth he had prepared for them. You see other examples back in the Genesis record like be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters. Not refill. Well, that could mean there was no water prior in whatever existence that was before Adam and Eve. Well, think that if you want. Thus it appears that the change to replenish was merely a stylus variation. A stylish variation that was only used seven times, folks. But 195 times, fill, filled, or full was used in the Old Testament. The word translated replenish in the KJV simply means fill in the Hebrew. In the English of King James, replenish meant fill, not refill. The words replenish therefore cannot be used to support ideas about our previous cre creation, which was destroyed. In any case, such erroneous theories invented in response to millions of years idea must hold to the um umbilical notion that there was death and suffering before Adam's sin. One other source, and then an just to drive it home repeatedly so there's no question what this word replenish means. 
Gap theorists staunch believe the word replenish in Genesis 1.28 means to refill. But the word replenish in the transitive case means to fill. And you find that all the way back, not that long ago, in the Webster's Dictionary in 1828. Replenish simply meant to fill, to stock with numbers or abundance. That is what the original meaning of the word was in English from the 13th and 17th centuries. We already covered that. In 1611, the word replenish only meant to fill, not refill as it does today. Just like the word gay has changed its meaning. <laughs> Robert Codry's Alphabetical Table of 1604 and others lists to fill as the only definition of replenish. All the way back to 1604. Let's move on. I don't want to beat this to death. I could give you source after source after source that breaks this idea down that replenish means in King James Version to refill. It never did. It never meant that <clears throat> in the Hebrew and it never defined that in the King James Translator Days, which was first published in 1611, as to refill, as again, refill it. It never meant that. It never meant that in the Hebrew, and it never meant that in the English back in the day when they put this translation together. <clears throat> What does it mean then? Fake news is very popular as a saying these days. Trump made that popular, I believe. The gap theory, and I'm not done with it, but this should put the nail in the coffin, is a fake theory. It tried to blend science with Bible to appease the science world and the public that were being misled. Mass numbers of public, the majority of the public being misled. So they came up with an alternative. Then Schofield put it in his Bible, which was very popular when it came out, and for many decades after that, and it's still popular today, that peddles this fake theory, fake news, fake teaching concerning Genesis 128, concerning Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. It is... It's not viable, period. It's a fake theory. I'm running out of time, so turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> Chapter 15. Verse... 45. What does verse 45 have to say? And so was written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And I know some of you that still hang on to that fake theory will say, well, God created something that was different than Adam. Give me the proof. 
Because when you an analyze what you think you know about that, it really falls apart, which I'm not going to get into tonight. I don't have time. It just doesn't hold water, my friends. And so was written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That quickening spirit was Jesus, that last Adam. Quickening, I had you write this down in the margins before, but if you didn't, to make alive. Jesus is the one that brought us back to life by what he did at Calvary. Adam died, the first Adam, spiritually. That connection was broken with God. Yes, we live in the flesh for so many years, but really we're walking day without Jesus. Well, not that like a crazy zombie series, The Walking Dead. The real Walking Dead are, the, are people that exist in the here and now and all the millenniums that have come and gone without Jesus. That's the true walking dead. Adam was the first man. Him and Eve were not refilling the earth when they had children. Animals were not refilling the earth. Because there was no man on earth before that time. There is nothing in the scriptures that can prove it. There's a few verses that have been taken out of context, including the ones we covered tonight and the ones we already covered. We covered 75%, if not more, of what the gap theorists hang their hat on. Gap theorists cannot use Genesis 1.28 to back their theory. It just won't work. It's fake theory. Period. And as I chop away at their most popular verses that they use to try to support this theory, I think if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you'll see that their theory falls apart. I know some of you are still going, well, I can't imagine God creating all this in six 24-hour days. I'm not saying he did or didn't. But why couldn't he? Why couldn't he? I'll continue this teaching probably at least one more live service dedicated to the gap theory and this is all leading up to the second coming but you have to know the end from the beginning and that's why I started here we have a long track to go to get to that if you're interested I want to know I want to know. That means all of you, it's your turn to participate. To let me know. You got it? Play a song.